Okay, hello, good afternoon. I am here at my outdoor studio. I'm gonna make uh, a little demo for you, uh, more techniques of painting without brushes. So we already looked at pouring, and now we're gonna look at some different ways to get the paint to the canvas without using a brush. So I, I started this by pre-mixing and the first thing I'm going to work with is dragging paint or wiping paint. So I'm going to use squeegee tool. So squeegee is going to be um, like technically it's a, the rubber thing that you use in printmaking and also for like cleaning windows. It's a little r rubber blade. But I'm going to go ahead and just use a popsicle stick. And do you remember we just... We'll, we'll, by the time I, we're looking at this, we will have looked at Gerhard Richter, and he's using big giant pieces of metal and wood. So I'm going to go ahead and fill my squeegee with paint. Usually I have it on one side, but for this purpose, and then I'm dragging the paint. on the paper or the canvas and I can go in more so when we see Gerhard Richter he's letting his paintings dry sometimes between um, the painting session but this is working out pretty well wet on wet I'm um, Oh, I knew that would happen if I didn't turn off my phone. It gets so popular when the video camera is running. Um, I was really tempted to pull the squeegee across that paint a second time, and I just decided to not do that. I have very little real estate here. So I'm dragging this paint. I'm going to use this technique a couple of times. Of course, you can turn your painting whatever direction you want. I'm just grabbing. So I'm going to put some paint down. I'm trying to have you see different technique and different things that can happen. So when we're doing this in silk screening, we put a blob of ink and then we drag through the picture in the screen, but I can use that same technique to get um, a different paint application. Um, so you know, you can also paint with a palette knife like this, and that's using the back side of the knife. And ironically, that's like the one thing I don't have here for you. But I can um, approximate painting with a knife. Because you don't have the palette knife in your painting kit, I don't want to do things with tools. I, I figure most of you can find something like this. I know a lot of you probably have them left over from Lembo. So uh, you can just work with a knife to paint. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm messing with those original drags. If I was doing a painting with dragging, I probably wouldn't. So this is like experimental. We're just seeing different ways that we can apply paint. I'm sorry, you're off camera. you we're not live so you can't yell at me and tell me so we're just looking at different ways to apply paint that's a lot of paint um, another thing that we can go ahead and do to this is grab a paper towel and we can wipe back so if we did something we didn't really like, we built up too much paint, 
or we just want it to dry really smoothly so that um, we can go back and do the textured painting again. I, I personally don't like texture in painting very much. So you saw those words. I'm just going to wipe those words out. Squeegee. So I'm dragging paint. Now that I have quite a lot of paint on here. So you might be doing something like this right over the pores you did or maybe just in certain places that you were in certain places that you were um, you, you can go in and you can paint with a tool that drags paint so remember that I'm going to ask you to I guess have at least I really like those yellow. They're an accident. They're a happy accident. Okay, so now, sorry, I don't have very much real estate under this camera. I keep moving it to be able to paint. Okay, so I got a lot of that Gerhardt Richter energy going on here. And then I wasn't expecting to get those little yellow blot spots. Remember, we're making an abstract painting that's just about paint, but we're also doing research for our painting that talks about um, music. So getting the mood and the feeling and the rhythm of music. So you may discover something in your painting without brushes and then you know a lot of times I just go over the edge like maybe this is too much yellow but I also want you to see me like do too much yellow and go oh she should have stopped with less yellow so sometimes when you see me keep pouring when I should have stopped or keep dragging when I should have left it alone what part of the lesson is learning you know, to be able to go for it, but also to be able to stop. Okay, I'm pretty okay with this page. So I'm gonna, yeah, before I start these things, I never think about what I'm gonna do with them when I'm done. So that's part of the lesson, is think about where that painting's gonna go. Okay. So, another thing we could do to this painting is we could like gouge into the paint with a tool. So, uh, there's actually, um, it, it's an Italian word, scraffito, which is to, dra to, to dig into or scratch into. They do it with uh, clay, so they'll put white clay, red clay then white clay again and then they dig into it with a tool and they reveal the red clay underneath the white clay so I'm gonna start with that red and then I'm gonna go ahead and use this um, I'm using the old paint from the fall because it's been sitting in containers that are sort of airtight but not 100%, it's starting to thicken up. So it's really nice. Right now, I want to make a nice, thick, now I'm finger painting. I want to make a nice, thick, paint because I'm trying to completely cover that light pink. And So we want something that's getting closer to the texture of toothpaste. This is more like pudding, but 
I'm, I'm trying to paint that out and keep it real thick. Oh, I picked up some pink. But that's okay. Because a little bit of pink on the top and then revealing some pink at the bottom could be very pretty. Okay, so... I'm going to set that up. And then I'm just going to go a little bit deeper over the top. I have some pretty thick black paint here. This is from one of the fall kits. And I'm going to put some gel medium from our new paint set. So this is the gel medium. You have two ounces. I also give you a, a container of gloss. But I'm going to go ahead... So that gel medium is made to be thick and it will thicken up the paint and give it more body. So it becomes, I'm going to go ahead, ooh, I'm, I'm actually doing that black on purpose. You can see it's super thick, the gel. So. If I'm showing you things that look terrible to you and you're like, I would never do that to a painting, don't, don't stress out. You don't have to. Some of you are just going to be like, oh my God, I didn't know. I didn't know that we could do this. I thought we always had to do like still life and landscape. And some of you will be abstract painters and you will love all these abstractions. So I'm just building up a gooey. There's this French painter, Jean Dubuffet. He would just get all this really thick oil paint. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this weird, but I'm making a really dirty painting table. And then I can go in there and I can draw. What am I going to draw? I don't know. Um, I guess I'm going to make an abstract one. So now I'm using the sides of this screw because it's taking like... Do you see? I'm revealing the pink through my scratching. And if... If all of this doesn't show, let me turn this. I'm definitely not hoping to use this screw again. So I'm going to just go ahead and do my favorite doodle. So remember, I'm drawing right now. I'm drawing into the paint. So the the... The definition of draw is to set something down and drag the tool. And it's like a, a point that's moving with a tool. And I can go this is chopsticks I got with some Vietnamese food. Oh, so yummy. But I had my own chopsticks, so I didn't open the package. So I'm revealing that pink underneath. And if you're going to do this on your own painting, you probably want to give a couple really good coats of pink, but I'm just showing you, you know, I'm a realist painter. I am not an abstract painter, but I really appreciate abstract painting. So one of the ways that you learn to appreciate what other people do is by walking in their shoes for a mile or so and see what it feels like to make those kind of paintings. So I'm just gouging and 
dragging and even scraping away paint. Okay, so this is scraping, gouging, drawing into scraffito. If you go to if you go to Italy, you can call it scraffito. So that is what that looks like. It's got a really great texture. And some of that paint will shrink down when it dries, but some will be standing up. Um, you may have done something like this when you were a little kid, like drawing with glue and gotten like glue texture. It is something you could do with the, the paint. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside. Okay, don't be like McManus. Have a plan where these gooey paintings are going to go when you're done. You can still use that setup we use for pouring. Um, okay, so there's a couple things that you might want to try. Um, remember, you can use other tools. So, I was going to do a broccoli and then I ate the broccoli. Sorry. But you can use the, you might not like the way it looks, and I would definitely experiment. I'm just using sketchbook paper, um, mixed media sketchbook paper today. But you can draw with non-art materials. I'm making, I made a carrot stamp. When I was a kid, we used to make potato stamp. Christmas cards and stuff. Okay. You might like that. You might not like that. If you wanted to make some like textured shapes and they were like relating to your music and you wanted them to be kind of wide open, I'm finding that if I stamp on the scratch paper and then stamp. So um, I'm going to use a brush for a second, but not on the painting. So I'm going to paint onto this bubble wrap. And then I'm going to use the bubble wrap as a print. Did you notice that Miss McManus's hands are getting extremely dirty? Let that be a warning to you. So we did this with um, plastic and watercolor. So this is something you could do taking a piece of plastic, different um, plastic and, you know, crinkling it up, pl plastic or paper towel. The, pap the dirty paper towel could even be used as a stamp. as part of our mark making. So we're, we're, we're getting paint to the, um, to the canvas without using a brush. And that leads me to you, I saw Picasso painting at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City and he like just spent all afternoon making these like Hershey's Kisses out of the paint tube. So you'll see artists. Don't worry, I know this is ugly. Don't feel sorry for me. You're trying to describe music. Here I'm. Making silly patterns. Direct from the tube. What happens if we go direct from our little paint jars? I don't know. I didn't test this. This paint is what they call self-leveling. It's starting to level out. 
so you can see these ones level off and these hold the point. These kind of experiments might be a bad use of paint for you because you have to make a few paintings. So if you don't like the way this looks, some of you might be, oh yeah. And so like, what would I do to get this color to make those uh, Hershey's Kisses? I would probably experiment with that gel medium and see if mixing this with the gel gives it more um, stiffness because right now it wants to level out. And I think over time it's gonna spread a little bit more. So you could paint directly from the tube or directly from the squeeze bottle and that could give you something to do. Um, like that would be the absolute final. That would be the absolute final move that I would make in the painting. Um, here I'm using like a credit card to drag. So you guys have a lot of things around your house. that you could um, use. This is something I would have kept in my wallet before COVID, but now I haven't been out in so long, I don't need it. Okay, so um, remember, if you do something you don't like, you can always scrape it down. So I'm just showing you. You can just take it and you can scrape, you can scrape out, you can flatten, you can get rid of. The thing is to build your painting from thin to thick. That's why we started with pouring because the paint needs a lot more water to pour. So that is the thin layer down in the bottom. Um, and then, of course, you can just finger paint, of course. Um, you might you might feel it, but don't forget that paint is going to be on your, um, your hands for a long time. So different, you know, grabbing different tools and seeing what they do. Um, it's probably going to be better if you pre-mix your paint, like we were talking about right before the spring break when we mixed up a palette to make the painting with the large brush. I'm just trying to get, get rid of all those words and turn it into all a painting. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is actually a paintbrush. I'll get rid of this. Have a plan for where these paintings are gonna go when they're wet. Okay, I'm out of paper. I wanted to show you that I actually make a lot of tools myself to do different things. And even though I was saying I'm not an abstract painter, I'm a realist painter, that's all true. I do make abstract paintings. And um, I wanted you to see a lot of times I'll buy things at like Home Depot or places. And I actually modified the tool um, so this is a painting I gave a haircut to. I cut away about half the hair. And then I cut away these gaps because I wanted to paint stripes. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in water. I'm going to, I did not want these stripes to be perfect. I was painting grids and I wanted the grid to be wobbly. So I put this down. And I, I have made dozens of these paintings. So I'm really good. This is just my scratch paper. After we painted last week, I used up all my leftover paint on my palette to paint these pieces of cardboard I had laying around. And 
since we are still working on that standard that says to make an artwork without a preconceived notion. So I am totally just reacting to the paint. When I'm making these paintings, I don't really have an idea. It may seem casual to you guys. Okay, so that's a tool I made. I made this brush like 20 years ago. And so now I'm painting on it. And then in, in the paintings, those grid paintings I made with this tool, I would let it dry. And then I would go the other direction. So I think the, the whole point is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. At this day and age, artists will go to Home Depot and buy construction supplies as much as they will um, buy art supplies. And you have people like Mark Bradford, you know, selling his paintings for almost like a million dollars each. And he's, um, he very proudly says if they don't sell it at Home Depot, it probably doesn't go in my painting. So, like, he buys his art supplies at the hardware store. I don't know where he buys his art supplies now. He's pretty famous. So, that's just my little bonus, is my groovy little self-made bad haircut paintbrush that makes um, interesting stripes. I At least, they're interesting to me. They may not be interesting to you, but I'm just going to make this into a postcard. So I'm happy with, um, I'll probably do the stripes a couple more times with different colors. I managed to get myself all painted up. Okay, that's the end of this demo. We're going to discuss.